Hey guys, so you know, I've been thinking lately, like, you know, obviously I have the 3D printer now and I want to start making bigger and better projects and I need a CNC machine, but, you know, being on a college budget, I can't really, like, afford to get a nice one, so I just thought, hey, why not make it? So, in the next few videos, you'll be seeing me build my CNC machine. For this CNC build, I have a couple goals that I really want to achieve. The first being a big working area. You know, a CNC is supposed to be a lot faster than a 3D printer, and it's supposed to help you get bigger, bigger stuff. And I'd really like to get to about a four square foot working area. Obviously, being on a college budget, I need it to be really affordable, so I'm going to shoot for a goal of being less than $400 for the whole build and relatively high accuracy, you know, as long as if I can be within one millimeter, I think that accuracy is good enough for the projects I make. So we're going to go over a few of the parts that I got for this build. To begin with, you know, I got the stepper motor controller. For me, I chose the LPT port version of it, so it uses the old printer ports on, on PCs. Going this route, it was a lot cheaper than going the USB based. Stepper motor controllers, I saw some for like $200. I saw Arduino based ones and that, but nevertheless, it was still more expensive than going this route. Obviously, I have a power supply to power this. I have four stepper motors, some, I think these are G2 timing gears, G2 timing belt, some linear rod supports, and like some linear rod smooth gliding bearings. So for me, all this right here, the controller, the power supply, four stepper motors, and all the other little miscellaneous things, this was all $170 ordered, which is significantly cheaper than going going the USB route, and it still works. So for me, I had to buy an old laptop that has the LP, LPT port on it to work with this. I know I'm going to probably get this question a lot, so I'll just answer right now. No, you cannot use a USB to LPT adapter the way the way that the CNC software sends a signal out you wouldn't be able to get your timing correct unless you get software that's compatible with that the stuff that I'm using that came with this is not so if you go this route you cannot use the USB to LPT adapter it won't, it won't work for this because of the way it sends the timing out so to begin with you know I just went to Home Depot and tried to get all the easiest parts that I could get. So you know, I got this two foot by four foot by one half inch MDF board, and this is going to be the base of the CNC machine. You know, I like that it's actually really big. Um, I'm not going to go the full depth, but I have enough that you know I start big and go smaller. So I went half inch because you know I thought three quarter was a little bit overkill. So right now I'm going to go start by adding adding uh, aluminum, square aluminum tubing all around to give it uh, support on the all around the edges. So this was my idea. As you guys saw in the time lapse, I just I went and marked it down and then I just took it out to my chop saw since this is aluminum I could easily cut it with my chop saw so I get nice 90 degree angles. I roughly put it on here and yeah, it fits pretty good. So this is what I'm putting on the outsides to give it more uh, structural rigidity in that. So now I'm about ready to start drilling into it and I'll uh, screwing this down. All right, so I just had the holes drilled and now, so what I'm, I drilled it through here, then I'm gonna go, then I'm gonna put this below. The reason I'm gonna put it below is because when I, when the drill bit went through them, the have to kind of like rip pieces of the bottom off, and that's yet again why I'm putting supports down. Awesome, huh? So, so just like that. But see, this is sticking up a little bit too much out of the yeah. So I'm actually going to widen just a little bit of these holes more, just so they uh, make sure it stays as flat as possible. Put 
all these machine screws through. And uh... Okay. So then I'm going to put some lock washers on. Then then just the nuts. So now I got the bottom, one of the bottom supports screwed in. And I mean now it's as it's solid as a rock. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna retake it off, put it back on top just so I can start doing the rest of them. So right now I finished um, drilling and screwing down the MDF to the aluminum. So now we have a nice, I mean, extremely solid, a solid uh, surface to work on. And I know some people are probably wondering, well, aren't you going to mess up the MDF? I want to put a thin foam layer on where the work area is going to be after. So you know, I'll, when I basically do cutouts, I'll go into the foam, and once the foam gets really bad, I'll just take it off and put a new piece down so right now these um, these linear rods I believe these are eight millimeters like I said everything's gonna be in the description all the parts I use if you guys want to do this or make it better than I did but these are 39 and 3 quarters or 39 and 3 eighths and this is 48 and 3 eighths so this these are nine nine inches shorter than this so right now all I did was make two lines roughly four and a half inches because you know just so this these fall in the middle four and a half inches and I'm going to take my take my level because I know this is like the most flat object I have in here that I can make sure that both these follow follow good line when I screw in the supports these are the supports for the linear rod huh? I, I got to make sure that they're perfectly flat because if they're slightly skewed it's going to really mess it up as the line as the carriage or whatever scrolls or moves down. So. Just trying to get a rough idea. There. And this way, since I'm using the level, it should fall pretty flat and then everything will go down there smoothly, hopefully. Now I'm just going to see if I can... There's somewhere I can secure it down and... So now I'm just going to make some points where I want to drill the holes. Okay, so now I have my marks. 
And I'm basically going to follow the same process I did for here. Just drill out these. And the hole I'm drilling is a little bit bigger than the screw, so I should have some wiggle room to make sure I get it pretty flat. So as of right now, I've gotten the linear rods, the, the linear rod mounts, all screwed in. So right now, both on in this direction, I guess you can just call this the X direction, and the Y direction, I have them well within a sixteenth of an inch, you know, in accuracy to one another. I'm assuming it's probably closer, like a 32nd. So that's well within our accuracy of error that we want. So this should suffice. Now we have to move on into getting these in. So my, my train of thought was that I'm just going to put the motor right in here. Basically cut out a, a outline for this and have it just fall right in. So right now I have this piece of paper. I'm going to just basically trace the outline of this motor on. Because using the piece of paper, I'll be easier to trace it back onto the MDF. Awesome, so I got that traced out on here with plenty of room for error so I could slightly shift it around as I need to. Now I'm going to do the other side, then we'll cue over to the time lapse and we'll cut this out. So I got the motors installed. I, I, I chose to do two motors for this axis. Because when if you only have one motor, as soon as you start moving in that direction, you actually get a slight skew where it turns a little bit. Because this is going to be moving, or this side isn't. So if you only have a motor on this side and you went, you'll actually slightly be skewed a little bit. So I have two motors in here. One's going to be a master, one's going to be a slave. Well, I'll obviously talk to, talk more about that later on. In this video, I just want to show you guys the initial build. So. I chose to use two rails or two linear rails for each side, hoping I'll give it more structural rigidity in the middle so there's not much flex, but I'm seeing flex. So for the second series, I'm going to, when I design this axis of the CNC machine, I'm going to design something where I can have these on the wheel that are holding so the, so the wheel also tries to maintain at one level so it doesn't flex in the middle. That way it can be more structurally sound. I hope you guys enjoyed the first part. Stay tuned for part two.